Dave Garland, uh, you guys have been here about a week or so with Danny Hart doing uh, some testing. Yeah, I think three three days riding, put it that way. And you guys have a sort of a data acquisition mule separate from the race bike over here yeah. that has set up with all the sensors. Can you walk us through uh, what you guys are recording and, sure. and and how are you using it to, to adjust how Danny sets up his bike or rides on the track? Okay, so uh, first thing you can notice is uh, the brake pressure sensors front and rear. Uh, they basically measure how much pressure in bar that Danny's using the brakes. So we can tell if he's dragging the brakes unnecessarily through any sections that he shouldn't be uh, you know, on the brakes. Also gives us an indication if we've got any brake rub due to some slight flex, because everything's got flex out there, but there's an acceptable amount that you can cross off the list. So we always check for that. Oh, you've got a rear sensor here. Uh, this measures rear wheel speed and rear wheel lockup. Um, that's important because um, there's a direct relation to suspension movement and rear wheel lockup or rear wheel dragging. So we keep an eye on that and make sure that the brakes are not dragging or you're not on the brakes too much to affect what the suspension does. Um, inside here also is a vertical sensor uh, that um, basically does the same as the fork. So we get to know if the bike is doing this. Essentially we want it to do this because the pilot doesn't move anymore in these bikes because they're so long and the cockpit doesn't allow you, doesn't make you have to shift weight anymore. So it's really critical that the suspension does an extremely balanced job. So we measure front and rear axle movement in several measurements, G meters per second, or just pure millimeters, which is the easiest way to measure anything. Anyone can tell if a fork is doing 150 mil and the rear is doing 200 when it takes a big bump force then you've got an imbalance. And then you can you can tell then if the chassis is sort of seesawing up and down as yeah, a result? Yeah, you get this. And um, coupled with that is a central sensor, which uh, gives us a number of things. Number one, it gives us a virtual zero reading. It's never gonna be zero, but if the front and rear are doing the job of this, then the center shouldn't have very much movement, which tells you you're not getting pitched front to rear. So that's another important measurement. Uh, here last week when we were testing, uh, we had some small initial issues with lateral movement of the bike, which is another thing that this central thing does. It measures how much the bike is doing this, especially in the chop. Um, is that like testing, being able to tell how well the, the wheels are tracking? Yeah. Or the suspension is tracking the ground or doing. skittering around? Yeah, in very basic terms, we're, we're just measuring how much the bike is doing this. If it's doing this too much, you have some rebound issues that, that can calm that down. And that gives us a measurement on, on the graph, tells us what that looks like. It goes from this, that is really bad, to that. Would that generally be rebound being too fast? Yeah, or, absolutely. Or? There you go. If you lose contact with the ground, then you have to, you know, make an adjustment for that. And it just takes all the guesswork out. You know, all of this system really just tidies up what the bike does for the rider. And, and you said you don't uh, have anything on the rear shock to measure shaft speed. What's, no, the, what's the reason behind that? Uh, the reason behind that, we have a lever ratio curve that's ever changing. It's not something that, it's not information that you can use in in a very quick way at a race because you only have six to seven runs before you start sending it in real anger in qualifying so we need to just measure exactly what the bike's attitude does you know um, this also measures lean angle also measures rotation like this so we know where he is in a corner and what the corner is doing to the bike and how he pushes through the corner again with lateral movement we can begin to stable everything out but each sensor reads something that the other one needs to look at as well so um so that's a it's a lot of information uh available to you how does that translate into how danny either tunes the bike or how he adjusts his his riding is there a way to that you guys can quantify that yeah into... we switch the stuff off that we don't need to look at <laughs> so stuff that would be kind of a nonsense information that starts you looking in the wrong direction 
you know, we begin, we switch it off, you know, like here, we used a lot of lateral movement, um, front and rear ride height, which is really important in Barbasol because you're engaging huge strokes like this all the time. So the bike has to recover quick enough. It also has to stick itself to the ground as good as possible without it, without making it lazy. Um, up front, we've got um, this, which is an upper sensor, and that measures uh, Danny's input to the bike. So that measures how much he pushes through on the front, how much he's loading up the front end of the bike, which is another great piece of information because we can just measure dive independently of anything else if something like that's going on. Therefore, we either add a very small amount of air pressure or some low-speed compression dampen. And do you guys have it to the point now, you and Danny have worked with this system for, for quite some time, where he can come down after a run or after testing and feel something's not right and say, can we look at X or Y, and you guys know what, where to start looking as far as the, the data that you've acquired? Yeah, we, we kind of just... You know, it's a big learning curve because every, every time you go somewhere, it's all brand new again. And you can't say, oh, I know everything and I know what that does. You have to sort of begin to unwind, you know, what that information goes. And Danny's quite good at that, you know. He, he can see where he is on the track and he can see the relation between what his GoPro says and what we, what we see or what we feel we see on the graphs. So, uh, you know, this is all relatively new but for me I've been chipping away at it for three years now and it's kind of the final version that he can actually read on his own he doesn't need me so right. all in the quest for the, the fastest possible time down the hill and the yeah. best setup bike as, as optimally as you can for for yeah. a track that that's all it is you know we we're seeing you know you look at the past three four five years we're no longer racing for four or five seconds racing for hundreds and thousands so anything you learn to, to sort of make sure you're going in the right direction with an adjustment is, you know, invaluable. Not wasting time on adjustments. No, okay. you know, you can't waste time on adjustments when you only have six runs to make that adjustment correct, you know. All right. Thanks, Dave. No worries. Best of luck tomorrow. Thank First you. practice runs.